Hello, my name is Flavia Vinaldi. I am an architect and I studied to specialize my professional work on heritage and educational architect, architecture. And I finished some years ago my master in urban economy. I'm very glad to present today our work on educational architecture and heritage. In this first centuries of existence, Buenos Aires rapidly transformed from a village to a city, acquiring all the novelties and urban trends brought by travelers and immigrants from Europe. At the same time, independentists were conscious of the opportunity left by the old colony to create a new identity, unique to the new country in the process of consolidation, Argentina. This movement happened in some of the cities in the territory, but fundamentally in Buenos Aires, that would become in 1880, the federal capital of the Argentine nation. In this project for the building of the nation, education would get the main responsibility to produce well-educated citizens, and it would give place to the educational proposal imagined by Manuel Belgrano and applied by presidents Domingo Faustino Sarmiento and later on Julio Argentino Roca. By 1901, the city of Buenos Aires consisted of two recognizable areas that would later, with the expansion of the city, get incorporated into the same urban grid of the federal capital city. Such areas were Belgrano and Flores, and even though they were initially places of vacation houses, public, public schools were built there early on. As a consequence of the implantation of schools, the expansion of the city to set retreat areas was made more consistently attracting new inhabitants in the surrounding. The graphic of the right shows the different stages of expansion and construction of educational buildings during 1880 to 1914. And during this period, the city of Buenos Aires went through a major urbanistic transformation, becoming a modern city with trains, subways, buses and roads, street lighting and extended sanitary systems. The evolution of the urban expansion is visible in the city plans in graphic terms, but also in the increasing value of land in relation to the location of schools, proving the strength of education and its architecture as a tool to build cities. The first public buildings in the city of Buenos Aires were schools. Other institutions were lodged in a, an existing building repurposed for the new functions such as the Casa Rosada, House of the National Government. These educational buildings were the first big step for a developing country. It was the earliest systematic public policy with national reach. Every aspect would, was considered, study programs, teachers' formation, school spaces, architectural plans, technical requirements, placing and pedagogical recommendations. The importance of this public effort is proved by the fact that many of the buildings are nowadays historical monuments and they are part of a monumental complex that extends all along the country, preserved by a series of unified conservation guidelines that seek to adjust to international charter. In the present work, we preserve and restore the monumental complex constituted by schools applying criteria from the conservation sciences. In consequence, before intervening a specific monument, we consider that even the slightest action must be in accordance with the integrality, avoiding the alteration of the value and singularity of the building. We aim at recovering the maximum of the original states of the monument whenever the current functions of the buildings permitted. 
In the cases when it is not possible to cooperate to its original conditions, for instance, when the school is in need of a patio with a ceiling that was not originally considered, when it was added later on, we register the date of the intervention. When an impassive intervention is needed, we prefer to avoid areas of greater hierarchy, like libraries, rectories, imperial stairs, skylights, and domes. Nonetheless, technological adaptations are essential, given that the working we are going on doing is on buildings that have at least 100 years of age. The general criterion we follow is that of minimal intrigation for maximum authenticity, and we usually add maximum performance in terms of space-related function to answer to the largest amount possible of students in the public educational system. Our initial task consists in researching the building in its historical, sociopolitical, and educational context. In order to propose an action plan for the school, we first need to know the architect, his history, architectural approach, and background. We then proceed to detail study of the building, identifying the different sectors with historical value, and we prepare an intervention plan in which we consider the requirements of conservation as well as the current and future needs of the school's community. This process requires negotiations, allowing for agreement of execution and controlled use of the species to be preserved. We will now, now describe the case of the Superior Normal School number no. 9 in the first district of the city, located in Casao uh, 450. That is uh, an avenue that originally formed part of the limits of the original, uh, original city. It was built in 1890 and is one of the aforementioned play palace schools, as the photograph shows its luxury and beauty. It was spacious and has luminous rooms, luxuriously ornated and with floors of stone exteriors and even some interior spaces. We usually call them in Spanish simil piedra, simil pietra, because we relate these surfaces to the original stone buildings that was, were, were made in Europe. The materials used, however, were not a matter of selection and taste only, but because of ed availability that conditioned the selection of materials. The flooring was calcareous stain with natural colors, the carpentry and railings were made of wood or iron, and the ornaments were made of plastic. Turning now to the original plan of the building, it placed the spaces dedicated to hierarchical tasks, like the director's office, professor's room, and library in the front. After that, there were classrooms organized in a cloister system with simpler double corridors around the uncovered patios. Lastly, there were the service rooms and toilets. Vertically, the room in the front of the school followed the hierarchical organization and the classrooms located in the first floor corresponded to other students that could move autom autonomously in the stairs. Regarding the restoration project, a big part of the intervention was sustained by historical archives preserved in national repositories. The facades were surveyed and its modifications registered. The intervention followed two lines of analysis. On one hand, it considered the functional and technological updates required by the school's new study plans and its enrollment increase related to the urban centrality and natural densification of the area. On the other hand, it followed the preservation criteria mentioned above and carbon professional guideline, guidelines for architectural heritage preservation. 
Normal 9, Normal 9 building presented several issues as a consequence of its originally high ceilings in different moments space was gained by adding mezzanine, which similarly modified the volumetric composition of the room. The central barrel vault of the school that covered the main patio had collapsed in a fire in the 70s and had been reconstructed using the wrong materials, blinding completely the skylight access. Some of the galleries had been closed up to create new usable rooms and an assembly hall was added in the 1940s, transforming one of the patches. This series of work, works produced the practical elimination of open spaces in the school, leaving only two small ventilation patches. At the same time, new functions were being added and the workshop area on Santa Disciple Street gave place to kindergarten classrooms. Primary school was located then in the low level and workshops and laboratories over the kindergarten classroom. Before the start of interventions, we had to remove a protective mesh that had been placed in the ceilings that were very deteriorated and small pieces of ornament were falling. The wooden planks could not be saved and the vaulted brick structure was completed from the inside of the building. The original rhythm of the structure was respected and the surface was consolidated from underneath the wall and from above the roof deck, adding the hermetic finishes needed. The construction work done on the barrel wall followed the same process. First, it was completely uncovered and we checked the state of the metallic frame. Secondly, we worked on its enclosure with glass plates on the outer cover. This action recreated the original cover according to graphic and photographic documents, but budgetary limitations prevented a perfect replication. In terms of criterion of interpretation, it had to be combined with dating to bring back the original overhead lighting to the barrel vault while keeping the non-original assembly hall needed by the school. In addition, in addition the natural lighting system was also restored in one of the nodal points in the building, a distribution hall between classrooms where it had been blocked. This action considered the intention of architect Morra of making natural light go through the different levels of the building, illuminating also the round floor. It is a remarkable uh, regarding innovation because of the technology implemented in the original building, adopting thick glass plates that permitted circulation over them. Regarding to the treatment of novel historical materials, such as the cafe coating, they were made with mortar based on retinolometric and compositional analysis made in chemical laboratories, and similarly, the determination of the colors to be used in the interior, like plasters, was made using stratigraphy as shown in this image. As the last work we added in this school and several others, we considered the inclusion of the importance of promotion of research, conservation, and restoration of school's heritage regarding its own material, not only the building. The creation of awareness of the elements of national history and identity found in its school. This is everything for me, and thank you very much for listening.